Greetings, uh, listeners in uh, Radio Land. Uh, this is Metropolitan Scalarius welcoming you to another episode of Theology on the Air. This evening we will be discussing the topic of redemption. This is a very important topic, and we hope that you will find it enjoyable as well as entertaining. And to help us accomplish this mission this evening, we have with us our resident scholars, Father Tom Gore from Hampton, Virginia, Bishop John Mark from North Carolina, uh, His Eminence Cyril Mark Bailey uh, from Washington, D.C., and yours truly from California. This evening we'll be discussing the topic of redemption. And we will try to give some a, a broader understanding as well as a more narrow focus because this is a topic that in contemporary language obscures the true and original meaning of redemption. And the whole point of redemption and salvation in apostolic times as well as salvation and redemption according to the ancient uh, Jewish teachings. And so this evening we will attempt to try and coordinate these teachings for uh, your uh, knowledge and edification as well as our own. And to begin this journey this evening, we will begin with Father Tom of Hampton, Virginia. Greetings, Father Tom. Greetings. Um, I'd like to open this with a bit of a fascinating story. Um, ransom versus liberation seems to be the context for the word redemption. In ancient times, if a person had a family member that had been enslaved by another nation or by whatever circumstances, they could approach the person who captured their family member and pay them a sum of money and redeem their family member and bring them back home. This is a ransom concept. The other one is, if say, for example, you had captured a member of my family, and I had a small army because I was wealthy enough to do it, and I put together my army, and I go into your countryside, and I conquer you and take back my family member, I have also redeemed or liberated my family member. Now, from the studies I've done, it seems that this is the conflict of the term redeemed. Are we ransomed or are we liberated? I appreciate the one passage out of the Gospel of Luke where the prophetess Anna had walked in. She came into the room and there the Theotokos and Joseph had brought their beautiful new baby son, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of Man. And his purpose there was to be circumcised. And she proclaimed over him that this is the person who would redeem Israel. Now, the best way to explain this, in my, my opinion, and I have to be honest with you, I've struggled with this, but the challenge is how do we understand redemption? Both the earliest apostles use both contexts, but they tended to lean more towards liberation. But the work of Christ on the cross was to liberate us from the dominion of sin, to liberate us from the power of our enemy, to bring us back home and restore us back to our family. In the biggest picture, I seem to 
feel like that after everything I've read and everything I've seen in the last several days looking at this question of redemption, that the work of Jesus Christ is, above and beyond all things, an act of liberating us from the curse of the law, from the power of Satan, and from the shadows of darkness. And with that, I'm going to be quiet. Good evening, everyone. This is uh, Bishop John Mark from North Carolina. I would like to start off with saying the sacrament of baptism is our redemption. It is the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that redeems us from sin. It is the the, the devil and the devil used the flesh as an instrument against us, thus we were saved by the very weapon with which the devil fought against us, which is the flesh of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that freed us from the captivity of Satan with his blood. And then also, along with the redemption, you cannot take away the two important sacraments, all of my my importance, but the baptism in the Eucharist, because they both are set aside to free us from the sin that we have done. What Adam had did to us from the beginning, Christ redeemed us on the end, the end part. It, it, it is the redemption with his blood that set us free. A redemption is like being in slavery. It is like an emancipation. It is like when we are set free. So our redemption is to be set free from sin. That is the enslavement, but still is the enslavement of man. And the only freedom that we have from it, the only victory that we have in it, is the redemption of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's blood. So I, I would say that his flesh free our soul from the flesh that we have that enslaved us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. John Martin. This is Metropolitan Calarius. And uh, I think it's important to understand not only what redemption is, but where redemption uh, originates. Uh, the ancient theology of the uh, Holy uh, Orthodox Catholic Church the one holy Catholic and strong church is, is, uh, is regards that uh, redemption is the entire event of Christ, beginning with his, his personal and assumption of our, our flesh. According to the Council of Nisa, that the incarnation or the taking on of flesh by Christ was an integral part of our redemption. They also go on to say is that for a, a long period of time, Christians have commonly spoken of a triadic structure in redemption of the human race, a structure corresponding to God, to man's threefold alienation from God, because we know that one of the things about sin is separation from God. And so uh, Father Patrick uh, Reardon says is that first man is alien to God by reason of creation itself, because man is a different nature than God. And uh, that uh, the initial alienation between man and God uh, has been redeemed by God taking on our human flesh in the process of the incarnation. And St. John verifies this when he talks about the flesh, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Second, man is alien to God by reason of sin, by which all men are heirs, because by man's disobedience, many were made uh, sinners, according to St. Paul, Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 19. And to overcome this alienation from God by sin, Jesus died on the cross, thereby reconciling ourselves to our uh, 
<coughs> Quit here. Uh, Holy Scripture is repetitious and aesthetic on this particular point. Because when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. The third is that man is alien to God by reason of death. Because death is inseparable from sin. By reason of Adam's transgression, sin entered the world and sin and, and death in sin. Third, man is alien to God by reason of death. Death, according to the Bible, is not natural. It's not simply biological, and it is not neutral. Apart from Christ, death represents man's vital separation from God. The corruption of death is sin incarnate, and it's visit, it uh, becomes visible because when death, this last enemy, according to 1 Corinthians, has finally been vanquished, then may we most correctly speak of salvation. And in this term, we're also talking about redemption because man was redeemed from his sin by the death of Christ on the cross. This is the most encompassing uh, form of redemption because it was through Christ's death that man is redeemed. The question that I think is important, as I mentioned earlier, since we talk about death in a more contemporary sense rather than in the original sense of uh, the uh, Bible, is Christ redeemed us by his death on the cross but the question is, are we redeemed in life by the things that we do, or are we re uh, redeemed in the world to come before or during the final judgment? Now, personally, I cannot give a specific answer to this, but I am of the opinion that what many in contemporary religion consider redemption in worldly terms is not the redemption that was brought by Christ on the cross. Because by his wounds, he had been healed, according to Paul. And with this, redemption has a much more uh, uh, encompassing and possibly even universal connotation. And I invite our listeners and my brethren to, con to uh, consider this. And now we will have some remarks from uh, his eminence, uh, Cyril Mark from Washington, D.C. Archbishop Cyril Mark. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, Cyril Mark. Hello. Okay, it seems that we have uh, lost the Archbishop from uh, Washington, D.C., so we will have some uh, re remarks uh, beginning with Father Tom of Hampton. All right. I hope you can hear me. One of the significant beauties of the idea that we are liberated from the domination of sin comes from the apostolic uh, proclamation uh, coming from St. Paul. Um, and it begins in the 8th verse of chapter 5 of the book of Romans. For God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. It seems to me that the context... Testing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. I had to reboot. Oh, okay. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I can be silent and let you speak your part. Okay. Um, thank, thank you. We, we, I had some technical difficulties. I'd like to um, continue what Father Tom was talking about as far as uh, in the New Testament, whether it's called a ransom or redemption for the sins of the human race, the original Greek word litrosis means r- r- ransom. That is a sum of money, uh, the payment of which gives freedom uh, uh, to a slave or life or someone sentenced to death. The human person fell into the slavery of sin and required redemption in order to be liberated. And that's, we, we've all talked about that tonight from his slavery. Now, the early church writers posed the following questions. To whom did Christ pay his ransom Yes, for? Some suggested that the ransom was paid to the devil which humans had become enslaved. Now, Origen, for example, asserted that the Son of God surrendered um, uh, his spirit into the hands of the Father and gave his soul to the devil as a ransom of humanity. Now, uh, St. Gregory the theologian rebuked origin for this interpretation of redemption. Here you got the early church fathers really battling here. If the great and the most glorious blood of God and the high priest and sacrifice is given as a price of redemption to the evil one, then how glorious this is. And that's an exclamation point. The brigand received not only the price of the ransom from God, but God himself. And and then finally, St. Gregory of Nyssa interprets the redemption as deception and a bargain with the devil. Christ, in order to ransom people, offers the devil his very own flesh on the cross concealing beneath it the divinity. The devil rushed upon it as bait, but swallows along with the bait in the hook. Christ's divinity ah, was able to go into a place called Hades and set the captives free. Certainly, Satan did not know all this. He would have really stopped it. So with that, I'll stop uh, here, uh, Mr. Fault. Thank you, Archbishop. Now, uh, Father Tom will give his uh, summation. All right. As I, as I was um, discussing there, and thank you, Bishop Cyril Mark, for your comments, because they, they fit very well into what I'm saying. Yeah. I think that what we fail to understand is that whether we are dealing with the question of ransom or whether we're dealing with the question of liberation may be well beyond our capacity to debate. It may be in the nature of sacramental mystery. The argument I present because if I understand the ancient fathers, and if I understand the uh, uh, debate of redemption, it begins and ends with the question, does the subject of ransom become free? Hmm. It's hmm. not a question of how it's done, but it's a question, is it done? And is it done completely? And I would argue that whatever pathway that Jesus Christ and the Holy Father, whose name is unmentionable, and the Holy Spirit, who was present from the beginning to present time, 
It seems to me that what is given to free us is not the sacred nature of Christ. But it may have been used in such a way that the deceiver of our souls met his match in both the fullness of the crucifixion, the fullness of the resurrection, and was given an ultimatum to let my people go. Hmm. And as Moses led the people through the baptism of the Red Sea into the liberty of the new land, the challenges of 40 years in the desert, and the full liberation of living in a new land where they had to subdue and learn to live in, is the message of redemption. It's not a one-step decision. It's not a one-step activity. It is a progression of interaction between the holiness of the triune God and the simple confusion and sin of a redeemed people to victory. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Father Tom. And now we will have John Mark from uh, North Carolina to speak to Mason. Amen. First, I would like to quote a little bit of Isaiah 53, uh, where it says that he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity, the yeah. chastisement of our peace is upon him. And then Aldridge wrote in 253, he said that Christ had borne our sins and it has been bruised because of our iniquity, the punishment which was owing to us in order that we might be chaste and might obtain peace has fallen to him. The, the weapon that we were going to get, that Jesus took it upon him, he loved us so much. And I always go back with my speak of redemption to John 3.16, that God so loved the world that he gave us only God, so that Jesus loved us so much that he came here to shed the blood for us. But but that's just the beginning of our story of being redeemed. It doesn't mean that all we have to do is say, Jesus loved us, he shed his blood for us, and we're going to be okay. There's a part that we have to pick up and to be like him and to be a doers of the word. And also, I would like to read uh, a statement from uh, Clement. Where we go? It said, through Jesus Christ, we see as in a mirror the spotless and the excellent face of God. Through him, the eyes of our heart were opened. Through him, our sisters and darkness mind sprang up to the light. Through him, the ruler wills that we should taste the immortal knowledge that through our redemption that these attributes that Jesus Christ had given to us a lightning of the eyes, the darkness removed, that we may be able to see and be able to know him as our Savior and be confident that what he came here for was to shed his blood that we might be set free. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Mr. John Mark. And uh, my summation is that uh, <clears throat> it is in Christ that the purpose of human existence comes to be realized. It is in communion with God, union with God, and deification. According to a work by uh, uh, ascribed to St. Maximus, the confessor, St. Maximus says, God yearns for the salvation of all men and hungers after their deification. In his immeasurable love for man, Christ ascended Golgotha and endured death on the cross, which reconciled and unified the human race with God. So redemption comes through the incarnation and the uh, crucifixion, the death of Christ on the cross. 
And I think this is really important because, again, when we speak in contemporary terms, people speak of being redeemed as though someone has uh, forgiven them and all of a sudden, their, all of their sin, even the, even the sin uh, of uh, rebelling against God and uh, against, his, against the teachings of the church has somehow just fallen away. And so there is a misinterpretation of the act of redemption. And so many Christians are in peril because they believe this contemporary teaching. As we have said this evening, redemption comes through the death on the cross. It comes through the spilled blood of Christ. And it is not given by any human person. And uh, we will now hear the mention from this eminent uh, Archbishop Phil Mark. Uh, thank you, uh, Mitch Barton. Uh, many early uh, church fathers they uh, avoided uh, altogether the topic of ransom in the literal sense. However, taking, re taking redemption to mean reconciliation, as many of our brethren had talked tonight, of the human race with God and the adoption of his children. They speak of redemption as the manifestation of God's love for humanity and view uh, supported uh, by the words of St. John the theologian, for God so loved the world that he what he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It is not the anger of God the Father, but his love that lies behind the sacrificial death of his son on the cross. They tried to say it was not a ransom. It was love. Every human being is created and renewed in Christ. The redemptive act of Christ was not accomplished for abstract mass of people, but for each concrete individual. St. Simon says, God sent his only begotten son to earth for you and for your salvation. For he has seen you and destined you to be his brother and co heir So redemption, reconciliation is what the early church fathers focused on. Uh, that's my summation. Thank you, Archbishop. <clears throat> and we hope that you enjoyed our program this evening, and we hope that this might give God some new uh, insight into the concept of being redeemed and the process of redemption. And that this is not something that is an abstract act, but it is something that each human being must go through. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, does redemption take place here on earth or does it take place in the world to come? When we await the great awakening, the final resurrection of God and the entire human race, and we ask that uh, you uh, come back and join us next month as we do another episode of Theology on the Air with our apostolic blessings. We bid you good night.